Hello and good morning. It's Phil Thatch and today is December the 19th. I know you're probably seeing this later than that. And it is 726 in the morning. It's 27 degrees outside. And I've gotten up early to head to Curtain Pole Road once again to try to see the hooded mergansers. I was there a couple of weeks ago and I uh, didn't see any. But Sunday, my friend Joy uh, sent me a Facebook message and let me know that they were there. Of course, I didn't want to go on that particular day because it was so late in the day that the light might not have been very pretty. So the first time I was able to get there super early was today, the following Thursday. And off I go to try to see the hooded mergansers. Hopefully they'll be there. But first, coffee. Well, it's 7.44 and in a stroke of amazing timing, 7.44 is sunrise this morning and I'm here at Curtain Pole Road. Let's go see if there's some ducks. Someone has come out here to Curtain Pole Road in the night and taken the grates off the top of all these drains and put them down inside. There's four of them and they've done it to all four and can't people leave stuff alone? I'll be using the 500 F4 with the 1.7 teleconverter to start and the Z6 with the FTZ adapter. I've brought the 2.0 and the 1.4 teleconverters as well. Well, they are here. Not a lot of them, just one pair, but they are, let's see if I can, way over there on the very far side of this pond. So I've got this rig. And I'm, uh, I'm at that distance, I can't really make photos, but I can make video because I can crop, uh, I can go into DX mode and uh, make full frame video in DX mode. So it, it, it uh, adds up. I'll put the math on the screen of how many millimeters it is with the 500 and the 1.7 and the 1.5 crop. It was hooded mergansers that first brought me to this pond at Curtain Pole Road when my friend Brett Douglas years ago let me know that he had spotted some there. Now I go there pretty regularly for all sorts of wildlife, but in the beginning it was all about hooded mergansers. The male is the more colorful one on the left and the female is the cinnamon colored one a little closer to us. With the Z6 in video mode, there's a focus mode called full-time autofocus where it is constantly searching for something to focus on and you would think that would be the method to do this sort of video with but I had way better luck with autofocus continuous and anytime that I had the focus point on the bird I would press the back button focus button to keep the bird in focus but if the bird would swim in front of a log or what have you I would let my thumb off of the button so that the camera wouldn't change and focus on the log. It would stay generally on the birds. Now, of course, I'm not keeping 100% perfect focus during every portion of this video, but you could see in that clip just before this one, when they went by the log, the log stayed out of focus and the bird stayed, for the most part, in focus. Here's another example here as they come out on the other side. See, it's kept focus on the bird, but not losing focus on the bird and focusing instead on the log. And they are beautiful. Hooded mergansers are diving ducks, so they don't dabble. They dive underwater for their food. So this video is going to be pretty long. I've included quite a bit of hooded merganser footage. And what I'm going to do while you're enjoying the footage I'm going to read some information that I found at various websites on the internet to you so that you can kind of learn a little bit about the bird and I'll learn some as well while we're watching and working on this video. I'll start with the Hooded Merganser page on allaboutbirds.org 
which is put together by Cornell University, I'm pretty sure, and the Cornell Lab. They list the hooded merganser's habitat as lakes and ponds, its food as fish, it nests in cavities, and its behavior is a surface diving duck. Its conservation status is listed as low concern. Here on this range map from Wikipedia, you can see the orange areas are breeding, the yellow area is migration, the purple areas is year-round hooded merganser territory, and the blue areas is non-breeding hooded merganser territory. AllAboutBirds.com says hooded mergansers are fairly common on small ponds and streams across their breeding range. In fall through spring, head to unfrozen lakes or shallow protected saltwater bays and look for them mixed in flocks with other small divers like bufflehead and ruddy ducks. Pay attention for flying ducks too. A fast series of truncated whistles from high overhead may signal the rapid wing beats of commuting merganser. Okay, I took off the 1.7 teleconverter and put on the 2.0. So that's 500 times two is 1,000 times one and a half. This will be 1,500 millimeter equivalent video. Allaboutbirds.org says in their basic description, hooded is something of an understatement for this extravagantly crested little duck. Adult males are a sight to behold with black and white patterns set off by chestnut flanks. Females get their own distinctive elegance from their cinnamon crest. Hooded mergansers are fairly common on small ponds and rivers where they dive for fish crayfish, and other food, seizing it in their thin, serrated bills. They nest in tree cavities. The ducklings depart with a bold leap to the forest floor when they are only one day old. Here are some cool facts from the allaboutbirds.org hooded merganser webpage. Along with wood ducks and other cavity nesting ducks, hooded mergansers often lay their eggs in other females' nests. This is called brood parasitism and is similar to the practice of brown-headed cowbirds, except that the ducks only lay eggs in nests of their own species. Female hooded mergansers can lay up to about 13 eggs in a clutch, but nests have been found with up to 44 eggs in them. Hooded mergansers find their prey underwater by sight. They can actually change the refractive properties of their eyes to improve their underwater vision. In addition, they have an extra eyelid called a nictitating membrane, which is transparent and helps protect their eye during swimming, like a pair of goggles. Hooded merganser ducklings leave their nest cavity within 24 hours of hatching. First, their mother checks the area around the nest and calls to the nestling from ground level. From inside the nest, the little fluff balls scramble up to the entrance hole and then flutter to the ground, which may be 50 feet or more below them. In some cases, they have to walk half a mile or more with their mother to the nearest body of water. On the bird family tree, hooded mergansers 
lie between golden eyes and other North American mergansers. They share many courtship behaviors and calls with both of these groups. The hooded merganser is the second smallest of the six living species of mergansers. Only the smoo of Eurasia is smaller and is the only one restricted to North America. The oldest recorded hooded merganser was a male and at least 14 years 6 months old when he was shot in Mississippi in 2009. He had been banded in Minnesota in 1995. Here are some backyard tips from allaboutbirds.org. They say if you live near the appropriate habitat for mergansers, consider putting up a nest box to attract a breeding pair. Make sure you put it up well before breeding season. Attach a guard to keep predators from raiding eggs and young. If your box does not have nest material from a previous resident, you can add wood shavings to entice a new resident. The sun is starting to rise behind me, and as it does, it's starting to put some golden light out on the pond, which is what I was hoping for and why I came this early in the day. The light here is really bad in the afternoon. It's, it's straight up or backlit, not too good. Okay, so here's the settings on the camera. As you can see, I have electronic image stabilization on. I have the vibration reduction on. I'm shooting 1080, 60. I've got the microphone on manual at five using the Rode Video Micro. And there you can see I'm at F8, which is wide open. I've got ISO automatic and it's bouncing around at about 560 right now. And I do have exposure compensation set at minus one third of a stop just to try to not blow out the, the white parts of the beautiful male hooded merganser. But that's the settings that I'm using, uh, you know, and I have the, the Manfrotto 393 tripod head, which is, you know, it's really not the best for this. But with all that vibration reduction and electronic image, stabiliza electronic image stabilization, I'm able to keep things relatively smooth. Another Cornell Lab of Ornithology website is called Birds of North America. And the Hooded Merganser page there says, The Hooded Merganser is the smallest of three North American mergansers and the only one restricted to this continent. Breeding throughout a wide area in the forested east and northwest, where suitable nest cavities enhance adequate brood habitat. It is most common in the Great Lakes region. Favorite winter habitats include forested freshwater wetlands, brackish estuaries, and tidal creeks. Unlike other mergansers, which feed almost exclusively on fish, hooded mergansers have a more diverse diet, diving and capturing small fish aquatic insects, and crustaceans, particularly crayfish, with the aid of eyes well adapted to underwater vision. Taxonomically intermediate between golden eyes and mergansers in the genus Mergus, the hooded merganser shares many courtship behaviors and vocalizations with these species. Female hoodeds first breed at two years of age and lay unusual, almost spherically shaped eggs with disproportionately thick shells. Like other waterfowl that nest in holes, this species commonly lays its eggs in the nests of conspecifics and other cavity nesting ducks. And now, 
crazily, I'm going to leave that rig sitting here on the trail while I wander back to the car and get my coffee cup. I've only seen one jogger go by this morning. It's still crazy early. When it's this cold, usually the joggers and cyclists don't come out till 10 or 11, or at least not a lot of them. It's gotten a little bit brighter and I've been able to increase my shutter speed to 1 125th of a second, which is really the fastest you should use at 60 frames per second. After that, you'll get notchiness and jumpiness in your video. As you can see, the focus distance meter on the VR500 F4G shows the distance from me to the birds at over 50 meters. The Cornell Lab of Ornithology's Birds of America website goes on to say, The basic nesting ecology of hooded mergansers is relatively well known, particularly aspects of eggs, incubation, and brood parasitism. Although almost all these data are from populations using artificial nest boxes, the longest continuous study on nesting hooded mergansers is from Missouri, where box nesting birds were monitored annually from 1968 through 2006. Recent work on population demographics, site fidelity, and population genetics have created a clearer picture of taxonomy and population processes. Because of their trophic status, hooded mergansers have developed our understanding of how acid precipitation influences ecosystem processes as well as providing evidence of the buildup of chemical contaminants in different habitats. There is no reliable information on population size or status of this duck. Although historically populations suffered from deforestation, hunting, and perhaps contaminants, Current evidence suggests populations are stable and possibly increasing in some areas, even though large segments of the breeding population are vulnerable to the effects of acid rain. On the subject of migration, Cornell Lab's All About Birds website says, The hooded merganser is a resident to medium distant migrant. In eastern North America, many hooded mergansers move south and southwest in winter, but some actually migrate north to spend winters in the Great Lakes and southern Canada. Most of the hooded mergansers that breed in the upper Midwest migrate along the Mississippi River. Hooded mergansers breeding west of the Rockies migrate west and south toward the Pacific. Hooded mergansers are late fall migrants sometime moving just ahead of winter ice. In spring, they arrive early at breeding grounds within a few days of the ice melting. Another great website, Audubon.org, has the following to say about the hooded merganser. Conservation status. Undoubtedly declined in the past with loss of nesting habitat large mature trees near water. Now population seems to be increasing, helped by artificial nest boxes, including those intended for wood ducks. Habitat, woodland lakes, ponds, rivers. In summer, in forested country along creeks, narrow rivers, edges of ponds. May be in more open marsh habitats if artificial nest sites are provided. In winter on woodland ponds, wooded swamps, and fresh brackish coastal estuaries. Audubon.org goes on to say, Mergansers are our only ducks that specialize in eating fish. The hooded is the smallest of our three native merganser species and often seems to be the least numerous as it tends to live around swamps and wooded ponds where it may be overlooked. A cavity nester along wooded waterways 
in the temperate parts of North America, it has probably benefited by taking advantage of nest boxes put out for wood ducks. I was moving my camera as the mergansers moved across the pond and I couldn't help but make a short clip of this male northern cardinal. Audubon.org goes on to talk about hooded merganser feeding behavior. It forages by diving and swimming underwater, propelled by feet, apparently finds all its food by sight, eyes adapted for good underwater vision. Their diet consists of fish and other aquatic life, feeds mainly on small fish, crayfish, and other crustaceans, and aquatic insects, also some tadpoles, a few mollusks, small amounts of plant material. Young ducklings eat mostly insects at first. About their eggs, 10 to 12, sometimes 7 to 13, white, the eggshell is thicker than most ducks. Females often lay eggs in each other's nest, also in nests of wood ducks and others. Incubation is by female only, 26 to 41 days, usually about 33 days. Young, within 24 hours after hatching, leave the nest. Female calls to them from below. Young climb to cavity entrance and jump to the ground. Young find their own food. Female tends to the young for several weeks. Young fledge around 70 days after hatching. Audubon.org goes on to talk about hooded merganser nesting. The pairs may form in late fall or winter. In most courtship displays, male's crest is prominently raised and spread. The nest site is in a tree cavity near water, usually 10 to 50 feet above ground, rarely up to 80 feet or more. Also uses artificial nest boxes. Nest of natural wood chips and debris in the bottom of cavity with down added. Another website I found with some interesting hooded merganser information is borealbirds.org. It's the Boreal Songbird Initiative. Here is their hooded merganser overview. The smallest of our mergansers, and I guess by our they mean North America. Hoodeds are most often seen along rivers and in the estuaries during the fall and winter. They are usually found in pairs or in flocks of up to a dozen. When startled, they are among the fastest flying of our ducks. Males perform a beautiful courtship display and, once mated, swim energetically around the female in further ritual displays. Hoodeds feed chiefly on small fish, which they pursue in long, rapid underwater dives, but also take small frogs, newts, tadpoles, and aquatic insects. Description Hooded mergansers are from 16 to 19 inches or 41 to 48 centimeters. A small duck with a slender pointed bill. Male has white fan shaped black bordered crest, blackish body with dull rusty flanks and white breast with two black stripes down the side. Female is dull gray brown with warmer brown head and crest. Both sexes show white wing patch in flight. They describe the hooded merganser's voice as hoarse grunts and chatters. And they say nesting is 8 to 12 white eggs in a down-lined cup in a natural tree cavity or sometimes in a fallen hollow log. About habitat, they say they breed on woodland ponds, lakes, and rivers, winters in coastal marshes, and inlets. About their range and migration, they say it breeds from southern Alaska to Oregon and Montana, and from Manitoba to Nova Scotia, south to Arkansas and northern Alabama. Winters near coast from British Columbia, south to California, 
and from New England south to Florida and Texas. In this next clip, the female had caught a fish that was probably bigger than its head, and here she swallows it, and I'll show it to you once again, this time in half speed, slow motion. And now here it is once again in normal speed. I don't think she'll need to do a lot more fishing today. Here are 10 adaptations from the website animalspot.net. 1. Because the hooded mergansers use their power of vision, they have the ability to actually change the refractive properties of their eyes for improving their underwater vision. 2. They have a third pair of transparent eyelids called the nictitating membrane, which act as protection for their eyes, very similar to goggles when they forage underwater. 3. Females can often lay a fresh clutch of eggs if their first clutch gets consumed by predators. 4. Their legs are placed far back in their bodies so as to assist in paddling and moving easily in the water. 5. These ducks are capable of staying submerged underwater for up to 2 minutes. 6. Their bills are serrated and a little hooked so as to assist in capturing fish. 7. Like a few other bird species, the females would often perform a broken wing display for luring the predators away from their nests. 8. The white patch on the male's cheeks is to scare off predators and to warn away rivals, which the bird raises when alarmed. 9. As diving ducks, these ducks are less buoyant in the water compared to other species like the dabbling ducks. This helps them dive easily for foraging. 10. While the ducklings are in the water, they may gather together in a very compact group that will resemble a muskrat in swimming. This is a behavioral adaptation with the aim to deceive aerial predators like sharp-shinned hawks. Looks like my hooded merganser friends are ready for a nap just as the light is starting to get about perfect. Well, it's 9.43 a.m. and the Parks and Rec folks have fixed all the grates that were, I guess, vandalized overnight, removed and dropped down inside. Great job by the Parks and Rec folks. Okay, that's gonna do it for me this morning here at the Tennessee River Park Curtain Pole Road area where finally, after a long time of trying, I've finally gotten some Hooded Merganser video for you. Thanks for watching, have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.